most people pay little attention to the effect of rhinitis or a blocked nose. If you have severe sleep apnea, you may go and do a sleep study. You spend a night hooked up to various monitors. They monitor the apnea during the night. And the next morning you wake up and then you're directed to a machine, a CPAP machine. 50% of people give it up after about a month. They're not able to use it. This here is a crucial link. I would always, always say to people is try and address your own issues first. Try and help yourself. And recognition of the, the, the effect of open mouth breathing on children and adults during sleep is, is the first step. So here we look at papers. I don't want to bore you, but I just want to show you that there's quite a bit of evidence behind it. This paper is published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. It's entitled Nasal Obstruction as a Risk Factor for Sleep Disordered Breathing. Sleep disordered breathing includes snoring, sleep apnea, and insomnia. They're the three um, components that would make it up. And in quotes, men and women with nasal obstruction. Nasal obstruction is a blocked nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, um, deviated septum, nasal polyps, anything that impedes airflow in through the nose. Especially chronic nighttime symptoms of rhinitis are significantly more likely to be habitual snores. So if your nose is blocked, you're significantly more likely to be a, an habitual snorer. And a proportion may also may have frequent episodes of apnea, indicative of severe sleep disordered breathing. This paper is entitled The Impacts of Open Mouth Breathing on Upper Airway Space in Obstructive Sleep Apnea. In quotes, open mouth breathing during sleep is a risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea and is associated with increased disease severity and upper airway collapsibility. Results suggest that the more elongated and narrow upper airway during open mouth breathing may aggravate the collapsibility of the upper airway and thus negatively affect obstru obstructive sleep apnea severity. In other words, if you sleep with your mouth open, it increases the risk. This paper is entitled Chronic Nasal Congestion at Night as a Risk Factor for Snoring in a Population-Based Cohort Study. In quotes, nocturnal nasal congestion is a strong independent risk factor for habitual snoring, including snoring without frank sleep apnea, so snoring alone. This paper, relationship between oral breathing, which is breathing through the mouth, and nasal obstruction in patients with obstructive sleep apnea. If you have nasal obstruction, you're going to breathe with your mouth open because you feel that you're not getting enough air. That's given. In quotes, patients with complaints of snoring or sleep apnea can easily breathe through the mouth during sleep and that chronic nasal obstruction may induce obstructive sleep apnea. This paper is published in the Allergy, Asthma and Immunology. In quotes, in predisposed individuals, obstructive sleep apnea, sleep fragmentation, and the sequelae of disturbed sleep often result from nasal obstruction. Since breathing through the nose appears to be the preferred route during sleep, nasal obstruction frequently leads to nocturnal mouth breathing, snoring, and ultimately to obstructive sleep apnea. Another paper is published in Sleep Medicine. In quotes, the presence of nasal obstruction will most likely have an impact on the severity of sleep disordered breathing. Identification of nasal obstruction is important in the diagnostic workup of patients suffering from snoring and sleep apnea. Another paper, it's entitled Allergic Rhinitis Induced Nasal Congestion, Its Impact on Sleep Quality. In quotes, nasal congestion, which is one of the most bothersome and prevalent symptoms of allergic rhinitis, is thought to be the leading symptom responsible for rhinitis-related sleep problems. Another paper, I don't want to bore you on this, I want to show you that there's quite um, uh, predominance of the research available. Rhinitis alone is associated with mild obstructive sleep apnea, but commonly causes microarousals and sleep fragmentation. Reduction of nasal inflammation improves sleep quality and subsequent daytime sleepiness and fatigue. So if you find that you're sleepy, you need to ask the question if you're sleeping with your mouth open. And it's as simple as that.